most games are going to need a dialogue system in one way or the other. So let's make something like that. I have an NPC here that I can talk to. When I walk up to him, he says, hello, you smell. Go away, please. And then I can say, go F yourself, I'll punch you or kill yourself. Uh, in this case, I'm going to say, kill yourself. And then he says, you serious? Yeah, I want to fight. And then I get the option between, yes, I want to fight or no, I'd rather not fight, actually. And then he says, that's what I thought. Go run home to mommy and I can just leave. Uh, and of course, if I said yes, uh, I could program in him starting up like his uh, boss fight behavior or something like that. So we have a very expandable, very modular dialogue system here that entirely works based on behavior trees. Today, we're going to get started making this by just making the little text pop up widgets and we're gonna go from there maybe in the future i will also make a variation of this system that doesn't rely on behavior trees because there's some upsides and some downsides to doing it in behavior trees but for now let's get started so we're here in a entirely clean project as usual with the series what i'm going to do is you can download the entire finished project or on a per episode basis you can download the project files down below in the description for youtube members and patrons let's get into the first bit though we're going to make a dialogue box so let's make a folder here and we'll call this something like widgets and once we have that we're going to be making a widget blueprint user widgets and i call this wbp dialogue box this is going to be a box for our dialogue who would have thought this thing is going to consist of a number of different things we're going to start with a size box because size boxes are just nice for these little like modular pieces and the settings here you can kind of play with uh, as you please i personally like to set the minimum desired width to about 1200 and then the minimum desired height to about 100 and if we then put this inside of fill screen to desired on screen we can actually see how big uh, that is so maybe you want to be a little bit less so we want to make it like 50 uh, again i think 100 is pretty good uh, and then if we add in more content than 100 units this thing is going to be uh, growing and growing and growing and growing so for instance let's just put some text in here and if i put in a whole bunch of text like all this you can see that number one doesn't wrap around uh, that is because auto wrap is not set to uh, being true so if we auto wrap uh, it grows and shrinks depending on how much it needs but we want to set a maximum size for this size box as well so let's go back in here and we can say a maximum height of for instance about 400 instead so that way it cannot go over a height of 400. In order to make sure that we can still display text uh, beyond that though, what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on this text that we have here and we're gonna wrap it with a scroll box. This might freak out for a moment. Uh, it'll sort itself out uh, in a second. Don't worry about that. We're gonna wrap the scroll box itself. Again, wrap with, and we're gonna wrap the scroll box in an overlay. And the reason we do that is a scroll box can only have one little thing in it. And so can a size box, but an overlay can have two things in it. And what we want is we're going to be putting in an image in here as well. For the image, the horizontal and vertical alignment are just going to be entirely filled. And we want to make sure that the image is above the scroll box in our hierarchy here. This way it renders the image first and then renders the scroll box and text on top. And let's set the color of the image to black so that we can actually see the text and maybe set the alpha uh, to a little lower so that it's transparent now this still doesn't look very good and that is uh, mostly due to the fact that this uh, scroll box here is going to need a little bit of padding so if we give this about 20 units in my case of padding on each side you see that the text doesn't come up against the edges anymore which makes it look just a bit bad that is the basic setup of the text box itself now we're going to go into the text make sure that there's a variable here before we go into the event graph and here we're just going to make something so that we can set the text easily on an individual basis so let's make a variable here we'll call this the text and we'll make that of type text you can make this of type string uh, but the great thing about a text is that it has built-in support for like multiple languages and stuff so for dialogue you definitely want to have uh, all that built in if you later down the line decide that you want to add in a second third fourth 20th language anyway we're gonna expose that 
uh, as instance editable. And we also want to expose on spawn because when we make this widget, we immediately want to give in the text that it should be displaying. And then on event construct or event pre-construct, in this case, it doesn't really matter. What we're going to do is we're going to get both the text block and the text variable. In text block, we're going to set text, which you can see takes in a text value. Uh, again, you can put in a string here and it'll just make a text out of it automatically. But we're going to be working with text variables uh, to begin with, just because they're a little bit nicer. And now you'll see that our text thing here is entirely empty because the default value of this text variable is being applied to the text block and the default value is nothing. So if I just said a test text in here, a default text, we can see it says test text, default text. And if we zoom in, it does some weird stuff sometimes. Don't worry too much about that. You can set the horizontal alignment and vertical alignment of the scroll box also uh, to fill vertically and horizontally if you really want to. And that'll make it act more consistent when you zoom in and out. For the most part, this should just properly function either way in game itself, uh, but you might as well put this there. Now, one thing that is important is the text block itself. Uh, we right now have it set to horizontal and uh, vertical filling. The horizontal filling is fine, but the vertical I'm actually gonna set to being outlined on the bottom because that's going to make this thing uh, grow upward instead of downward, which is uh, generally what we want. And for now, that will be the dialog box. So let's close that down. And what are we actually going to do with that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to be making a second widget here. And this widget will be the interface in which the dialog will actually be presented. So we'll call this WBP dialog display, something along those lines. And we open that up. And this one is going to have a canvas panel because this is the widget that we're actually going to be drawing to the screen. You want to avoid canvas panels in anything that is a part or a module of your on-screen display only the things that are going to be directly drawn to the screen do you want to use canvas panels for and we're going to be adding to that a vertical box and after we've added that vertical box i'm going to first and foremost set the anchor to the middle bottom here and then i want to set the alignment to 0.5 and 0.5 or maybe actually want to set this one to one so 0.5 and one and we're going to set the size for the x and the y to whatever we want in a moment. Uh, but first we're gonna set the position uh, to whatever we need, and then we can put it rightly into place. So the size will be roughly something like this. This way everything will be outlined exactly in the center, and then we can increase the Y position or decrease the Y position a little bit so that it is somewhere properly on screen. You can also just like use these handles if you want to. Once this is in place, we're gonna take this anchor and we're gonna move this around so that it encapsulates the entire thing now it will properly scale with different aspect ratios and different resolutions so with that make sure that our vertical box uh, selected is a variable and then we can go into the event graph for this thing as well and here we're going to add a new custom event and this will be uh, called add widgets to stack because we're going to be stacking widgets into that box that we just added so whenever we have uh, something that we want to add we're going to call this uh, function here and we're going to be adding a child to that vertical box and the thing that we'll be adding will be an input parameter so that way whenever we call from anywhere we can create a widget and supply it in here and then it'll get added to this vertical box if that doesn't fully make sense don't worry we'll actually show you how to do that in a moment uh, once we added that child though it gives us a panel slot object reference which is quite generic uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to cast that to the vertical box slot and the reason we do that is because we want to set some of the alignment stuff and some of the size settings uh, procedurally because we're adding these things like on runtime so we need to set all of these settings for it through code. We can't just do it through the designer because they're not here yet. They're going to be added during the gameplay. So first and foremost, we're going to set the size. And that takes in a struct for size. But we can just split that structure pin. Uh, the in size can be 1. And the in size rule will be filled. The default, if you don't set this, uh, will be automatic and that doesn't really behave the way we want to behave. So that's why we need to do this. Then we can set horizontal alignment, which will uh, just be fill. It's just going to be uh, the default there. And then we set a vertical alignment and that's going to align to the bottom, just like the text. Again, because we want things to 
when they get added grow up to the top of the screen instead of going further down to the bottom of the screen and this way the bottom will be the anchor point so anything that we add is going to be added away from the bottom and then last thing to do right now is add a second custom event and this will just be clear dialogue widgets and all that's going to do is take our vertical box and we're going to clear the children out of it so that we have an easy function to just say get rid of everything in the dialogue box we just want to have a clean interface again with all that in place we can open up our third person character real quick and i'm just going to do this on uh begin play so we have begin play it does some stuff here and then we will create a widget and the widget that we're going to be creating will be our dialogue display and that will immediately be added to the viewport so add to viewport uh, but if we run this now, uh, we won't actually see anything. As you can see, there's nothing to see because we're not adding any actual dialogue to this. So what we want to do is we want to create another widget. And this widget will be a dialogue box, the first thing that we made. And you can see this thing takes in a text because we have that exposed on Spawn. So we can say, hello world, something along those lines. And instead of adding this one directly to the viewport, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this one that we created over here and we will add widgets to stack because that's a function or an event that we made on there and we can just get the widget that we just created and supply it into the content of that parameter and now it will make the dialogue display with the canvas panel and stuff like that add it to the viewport create a dialogue box and add it to that first widget and with that we now have something that says hello world when we spawn in so that's all good and fun these are some of the basic building blocks of building up a dialogue system like this this is all fairly basic stuff uh, we're gonna get into setting up a dialogue component and setting up like dialogue trees and choices and all that kind of stuff over the next couple of parts but i just want to lay the groundwork create the basic building blocks that we're going to be using moving forward in this first video and then next time we'll get a little bit deeper into everything so again if you want to get this project or the project as a whole uh, with all the finished code in it there's a link down below in the description to both the patron and youtube members to download it so go check that out if you want to and i'll be back with you next time doing some more stuff and for the full course if you're watching this in the future it should be all up on the youtube channel already but if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded there will be a link down below in the description to the patreon where you can find the full course and a very big thank you to all of my patrons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page a huge thank you to my cave student tier supporters earl monteville erno and my cave digger tier supporters sergey thomas